Hello everyone. So glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. Happy Easter. He is risen. Uh, I'm having to imagine in my mind that all of you at home are responding, He is risen indeed. Uh, that's normally what we would do uh, when we uh, get together on Easter Sunday uh, because we celebrate the importance of Easter being that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, hopefully you were able to be a part of some kind of worship service or some kind of uh, celebration of Good Friday, remembering that Jesus died on the cross for us to pay for our sins. Uh, but it's on the Sunday that we celebrate that He is no longer dead, but is alive. Three days after dying and being put in the grave, he rose again and now lives. This is a, uh, an incredible thing that we uh, are able to uh, celebrate as Christians, as we uh, love our God and understand that he has the power to even raise from the dead. Uh, it is probably one of the most significant differences between uh, our faith and many other faiths that are around the world. Our prophet, uh, as some other faiths would call him, uh, but Jesus as the Son of God, the teacher, uh, the chosen one, the Messiah, not only did he die as all other faiths, their prophets have died, but ours is the only one to have risen from the grave and is alive today. And that is something that we can celebrate and we should celebrate uh, on Easter, but really we should celebrate it every day. Uh, it's something that we, uh, the reason we come together on Sunday to worship God, uh, the reason we can do that is because Jesus has risen from the grave and he has not only uh, paid for our sins but he has conquered death and it's uh, it's why it's such an amazing celebration it's why it's the probably most not probably it is the most important day on our Christian calendar and so we want to do that today we want to celebrate we want to celebrate salvation from our sins and eternal life that Jesus has given to us. Well, let's just take a moment right now uh, to bow in a word of prayer before we go on into the rest of our uh, time in uh, God's Word and in this message that God has laid on my heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so very, very thankful to you for how you love us and how you care for us and how you have saved us from our sins and given us the opportunity for eternal life. Lord, it's today that we gather in homes all over uh, and are able to uh, listen in on this message that you are bringing to us through your Holy Spirit to understand that you care for us, that you love us with a deep, deep love. And it is with that deep love that we hold on with so much hope that we have in our hearts, even in these times that are very troubling. Lord, it's because of these uncertain times that we want to take the extra special measure to remember all that you have done for us, the love that you have for us, and the many ways that you have promised to care for us and provide for us and to walk with us. And Lord, so Lord, we pray for all of those who are struggling with the uh, outcomes, uh, the, the uh, devastations of this epidemic. Uh, Lord, those who have lost jobs, we pray for their families, that you would provide their needs. Lord, for those that are sick, we pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon them, that you would help them to be stronger and to get better. And Father, it is also with heavy hearts that we uh, also uh, think of those 
families who have lost loved ones. And we would pray, Lord Jesus, please have your hand on those families and help them in their difficult times of grief. Father, help us as your people to share your love that you have for us with the world around us in a time when they need it more than ever before. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Easter Sunday, as I've said, celebrates Jesus raising from the dead. Uh, this is the reason a lot of us have our worship services. A, a, a lot of churches, not all churches, not all uh, Christian churches, but most Christian churches have their worship services on Sunday instead of on Saturday, the Sabbath, like it was back in Jesus' day. Uh, the early church uh, recognized and, and was excited and celebrated that Jesus rose on Sunday, and so they started to call it the Lord's Day. And over uh, many, many years, over time, uh, pretty soon it became the primary day to gather together uh, and to celebrate. They would celebrate the Lord's Day, and, and that became the primary day when uh, Christians would gather together and to worship God in, in, a, in a group worship service, in a public worship gathering together kind of service. And so uh, that's why, uh, so uh, really Easter is the reason a lot of us worship on Sunday today. That's a little fun fact for us to start off today with. But interesting to note, uh, it is interesting to realize how our world has been affected by the life of Jesus. And uh, surprisingly, uh, from our side, because we don't think about death being a good thing, though it was a bad thing for Jesus, a difficult thing for him, it was a great thing for us that he was willing to go to the cross and die to pay for our sins and then three days later on the Sunday to raise again, uh, conquering death. Uh, and so we can say that, uh, or we know, we could proclaim that Jesus has victory over both sin and death. That gives us the salvation that we need from our sins. It, it provides us with hope. It fills our hearts uh, with the recognition of the power of our God and that we don't need to be afraid of death, that he has given us the opportunity for eternal life. The COVID-19 pandemic has put everyone on high alert. Uh, the present is uncertain the future is uncertain. It's in the midst of this turmoil, stress and suffering, that the true reason for Easter can become even more meaningful for us. Easter is the day Jesus rose from the dead and he, he stepped out of the tomb and conquered sin and death. He is victorious over sin and death, as I've already said. This is good news for anyone who believes in him, and it gives us hope. We're able to cling to that hope in our time of trouble that's going on around us today. God loves us so much. He was willing to do whatever it took to save us from our sin. Our sin against God gave us a death sentence. And actually, it gave us an eternal death sentence. Because God is eternal. God exists in the, sp in, in the spiritual realm, and uh, though we exist also in the physical realm, there is a spiritual realm that is much greater and much uh, more important and is eternal. And once our physical time on this earth is done, each and every one of us will face that spiritual reality and the decision we've made now. Uh, 
wants. Whether one way or the other, whether you believe in the spiritual realm or not, every one of us one day will face the reality of that spiritual realm and where we stand in our relationship with God. What we must understand as we celebrate Easter, we have to remember why it was important that we can only celebrate what Jesus has done for us if we recognize why he had to die and, and, and then raise again from the dead. God tells us in his word <clears throat> that the wages of sin or the price of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God loves us so much he had to provide a way to pay the price for our sin because, he could, because we could not afford the cost of that sin. Only Jesus, who being sinless, could pay the debt for our sin. If you think about it, Easter is kind of like a mortgage burning. Uh, we, we can celebrate Easter uh, much grander and much better, but as an illustration, as we would maybe celebrate a mortgage burning. When you have a house, and uh, often, at least for the great most of us, uh, if we're fortunate enough, we have a down payment, but we have to get a mortgage from a bank in order to pay for the rest. We have to get a loan, a debt, in order to buy a house, and then over time we pay off that debt. And if we are smart with our money, our finances, and we pay uh, our mortgage uh, on a regular basis until the end of the term, uh, then it, when it is all paid off, that mortgage is done. It's completed. That debt has been repaid uh, with interest, which is why it takes us so long to pay it back often. But when that day comes, we celebrate because we can burn those mortgage papers. We No longer do we owe a debt to a financial institution. We no longer owe a debt to someone else. Now it's all been paid and we get to burn the papers as a, as a, as a, as a way of, as a, as a symbol uh, of being free from that debt. But here's the thing. Spiritually, our debt of sin is such a huge debt. If we look at the mortgage illustration, to put it into perspective, it would be as if we were someone making $1 a day trying to pay back a $400,000 mortgage without a down payment. Now, even if there was no interest on a loan like that, it would be practically impossible to pay that debt back. But if you add interest on top of that, it makes it most definitely impossible for someone to pay that back. $1 a day, $30 a month, trying to pay off $400,000 in debt. The vastness of that physical illustration I hope will help you to understand the vastness of the situation that we're in spiritually when it comes to our sin before God. There was no possible way for us to be able to pay back our sin because we're sinful. And the only thing that can pay for sin is a sinless sacrifice. Well, imagine you're that person who has that $400,000 debt and you're only making $1 a day. And that has to pay for your food and all the other things that you need on top of that debt. You feel hopeless. You feel maybe even depressed. You might be able to understand uh, 
based on the situation that's been going on around us. Uh, there's lots of people around that are feeling more depressed than before because of the circumstances of this pandemic. Feeling hopeless. Um, maybe some of you were, were sad uh, that we weren't able to come and gather together to celebrate this day. But you can imagine that if you're in a position of trying to pay off such a huge debt, uh, there's just no way to do that. And so we were sinful people with the only way to pay for our sin with a sinless sacrifice. You're in that position, and then along comes Jesus. And he says to you, I will pay the debt for you. Would that not be incredible? Imagine again if you're in the illustration of the mortgage and you have this huge debt for the home that you and your family are living in. And all of a sudden someone came along and said, you know what? I'm willing, I will pay off your debt so that you don't owe anything else. You don't owe anything more. You can, we're, we're gonna pay that debt off and you can burn the mortgage and you'll be debt free. How incredible would that be? That would, I mean, that, I think that would blow our minds. Would it, would it not be an incredible uh, situation for us? Would it not be an incredible surprise and an incredible gift? But just the, uh, the weight and the burden that, that that would take off of our shoulders. I mean, it would be almost unbelievable that someone would be willing to do that. Well, that's the case with our lives spiritually. That Jesus is willing to to do that. He did. He died on the cross, sinless. He lived a sinless life, sinless before God, was the pure and perfect sacrifice, willingly gave him of himself, and died the horrible death that we looked at on Good Friday, was buried in the tomb, and then praise the Lord in his power rose from the dead victorious over the grave over even death that is a gift that is amazing but there's something that we need to understand about that we need to realize that since God loves us so much he gives us the choice to accept his payment or to decide not to. He doesn't force us to love him. He doesn't force us to accept his gifts. We have to accept the gift. We have to be willing to receive it. Now what we need to understand is there is something that comes with this gift. It doesn't cost us something. There's nothing that we can pay to receive the gift, but in taking the gift, we have to be willing to give all of ourselves to God. We have to say, I no longer am going to be in charge of my life. To take the gift, I have to give my life to Jesus. He bought and paid for it on the cross and is willing to clear that debt of ours if we accept that he is who he says he is, recognize that he loves us, and give him our lives and ask him to be the Lord and Savior of our life. We can't celebrate salvation without remembering the sin we need saving from. We can only celebrate if we've admitted our sin and repented or turned away from our sin and our old life and turned to God and a new life in Him. Now many of us have experienced that. And so we can celebrate. 
But if you've never made that choice, then you can't really celebrate what it is that God has done. Because you're not reaping the benefits of what God has done. Now, I, I, I want us, even though this is Easter, uh, we have been studying in the book of Second Chronicles, in chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. And we're at a place in that verse 14 that we've been looking at the phrases uh, of humbling ourselves, of praying, of seeking God's face. And the fourth and final one of those phrases in that verse is turn from our wicked ways. I want us to now look at that because it, it ties in very clearly in what we celebrate on Easter. If we start, though, back in verse 13, we looked at this last Sunday a little bit. Verse 13 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 says, When I put up the heavens, or sorry, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people. If you remember last week, we talked about that God loves us so much that he, that he will do whatever it takes to get our attention. Now, I mentioned earlier today in this message that God loves us so much that he was willing to do whatever it took to pay the price for our sin. When we are in a relationship with him, when we have given our life to him, and we're in that relationship, God loves us with deep, unabiding love. And so he continues to always pursue us in that relationship. And if we on our side of the relationship start to lose focus and start to look at our own desires in life, we instead of looking at him, we start to look at the things we want to look at in life, our desires, our goals, our things, we get distracted from God. And that's not the kind of relationship that God wants to have with us. And so, because he loves us so deeply, he will do whatever it takes to get our attention. And that's what this verse 13 of chapter 7 in 2 Chronicles is saying. That he is willing to create drought. Or when he brings pestilence. Or when I send a plague among my people. I, now, I would say that this applies to us right now, and this is why I'm sharing this with you. This pandemic that we're in right now is something that God is using to get our attention. Could it be that God is saying, you've been distracted, you've been looking away, you've gotten your life involved in your own desires and your own wants, you've become very selfish children of mine, and you're not focusing on your relationship with me, and I need to get your attention. And so I have sent a plague so that, and in verse 14 it says, when I do this, when I send this plague, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and forgive and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Now that phrase I want us to just dive into a little bit turn from our wicked ways. We've looked at humble ourselves. We've looked at what prayer. We've looked at seeking his face and what that means. And then he says, and if they turn from their wicked ways. He's talking to us as Christians, as followers of Jesus. His people, he said, called by his name. He's talking to us. And he says, if 
you will turn from your wicked ways. See, Satan likes to use the sin of pride and selfishness because it's the very sin that tripped him up. And in our world today, if you stop and are honest with yourself, if you look around, and more importantly, if you stop and look at yourself, you realize how much pride and selfishness exists. How much time and effort do we spend on our own goals, our own desires, our own plans, our own will, what we want to have happen. And now all of a sudden this plague, for lack of a different word, this pandemic has come upon the world and everything has changed around us. God is getting our attention to say, will you stop looking away at your own things, at your own desire, going your own direction, and can I grab your face and turn you back to look at me. I believe that if we, he gets our attention and we realize what's happened, where we've gone wrong, we humble ourselves before a holy God. We cry out to him in prayer, in communicating with the Holy God, in entering back into that relationship that requires communication, mutual communication, speaking and hearing from Him. We seek His face. We, we look and endeavor to, to sacrifice and put the effort and energy into having a personal, deep, intimate relationship with God. If we do that, we can have no other outcome but to realize the wickedness of our sin. And when we realize that, we turn away from that sinful life, our, our selfishness and the desires of our own, and we turn ourselves back to focusing on God. And that requires us admitting that we have sin, that we were going in the wrong direction. That's why he says, turn from your wicked ways. We turn from the direction we were going, turn away from that, and go in back in the direction following him. In fact, that's what the word repent means. To turn, to do 180 degrees. You're going one direction, and repent is to turn around and go right back in the opposite direction. We're going in the direction of our own life, our own will, our own way, and we realize the sin of that and we turn back around and we return to our path of following Jesus in the opposite direction from what our sin was. If we realize that this is what God is telling us in this passage, we understand that God is trying to get our attention today. People, we can celebrate because we have salvation. Now, our sin, after we have had salvation, we can't lose it. You don't lose it because you turn and start getting distracted. But our relationship with Him is hurt. And not only is our relationship with Him hurt, but it negatively affects the world around us. And remember, God doesn't just love us who've already asked Him to be our Lord and Savior. He loves the world. And so He loves so much that He gets the attention of His people when they have gone astray. And He says, I need you to get back on track following me because the world needs to know who I am through your life. But the only way that happens is if you humble yourself, return to prayer, 
return to a deep, intimate, personal relationship where we're face to face with God and we repent of our wicked ways, our sin of doing our own thing in our own way, our own will, repenting of that, turning back to God and following Him. Could it be that this Easter, God is trying to get our attention and, and to help us to realize this is what's going on? Because this passage tells us, this verse tells us that if His people will do this, if they will humble themselves, pray, seek His face, and turn from their wicked ways, God promises that He will hear from heaven. He will forgive their sin. He promises us to forgive us for what we've done, to reunite us in our relationship, to, to restore our relationship with Him. And then on top of that, He promises, I will heal your land. Friends, God is promising us that if we will repent of our ways and get back into right relationship with Him, not only will He forgive us and we receive all of the joys and all of the benefits and all of the blessings of being in relationship with a holy, loving God, He says that He will then spiritually heal our land. Now, right now, our nation and nations around the world need physical healing. I think, and Jesus did this many times in the New Testament, Jesus would heal someone physically in order to help them to see their need for spiritual healing. Or sometimes he would realize, uh, he would heal them spiritually and in so doing, bring about physical healing. At one point in time, I, I won't go into the, the story of Jesus, but the Pharisees were questioning that he said to a, a man, your sins are forgiven. And he knew what they were thinking, and he said, what is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or you're healed. Pick up your mat, walk, and go home. That's the power of that God has. And He's concerned for more than just our physical health. He's even more concerned about our spiritual health because that's eternal. What a wonderful thing. Is it possible that God could do an incredible, amazing, unbelievable act through this horrible event of this pandemic, that he gets the attention of his people and the people of the world, and people all over begin to give their lives back to him, and those who didn't know him realize and see his power as he heals people physically, and they are able to receive a healing spiritually. That would be a celebration that would dwarf what we're even considering today on this Sunday. It may be the next spiritual awakening. In fact, I think that's what God is talking about in that passage when He says, I will heal your land. He's saying, I will bring about a spiritual awakening. Now, as I have listened and read and talked to pastors and uh, spiritual leaders, uh, in throughout Canada and North America, I'm hearing evidence that this is already starting to happen. Has God got our attention? In the midst of this Easter, when we celebrate the salvation that, that God has given to us, might we just remember that that salvation was from our sins? In celebrating that He gave us salvation, might we take a moment to consider, have we been 
looking, living in the wrong direction, going in the wrong way, that God is trying to get our attention, to get our lives back on track with Him, so that the people in our life, our friends, our family, our workmates, that don't know Jesus, how He could dramatically get our attention and change our lives back to being focused on Him and being filled with His power, that He would have an impact in the hearts and the lives of people who don't know Him. Boy, do we need this in Canada. <clears throat> I don't know if you realize this or not, but if every Christian in Canada celebrated Easter, there would only be less than 1.9 million people celebrating the true reason, the true meaning for Easter. Not the Easter Bunny celebrations, but the real reason for Easter. That's less than 5% of the 37.5 million people living in Canada. I think that because God loves us so much, He's using a dramatic, maybe dramatic is not the right word, but an attention-grabbing situation. Maybe dramatic is the right word. It, it is, uh, to some degree, scary what's going on. It, it's certainly, I mean, that's all the news is talking about. Every time you turn it on, it's talking about this pandemic. Our life, everything we do. I don't know about you, but all of a sudden I have uh, an, an extra uh, recognition of how much I touch my face with my hands and I'm, I'm spending more time cleaning my hands and, and trying not to, to touch my face or, uh, or my eyes. I didn't even realize how much I was doing it before now. Uh, we think about our bills that have to be paid. Will we be able to do that? Uh, our, how do we get our food? Uh, we have all of this time for those of us who are isolated at home it's got our attention. Let's make sure that what God is trying to do by getting our attention doesn't slip by us. Let's not fall into the trap of fear and hopelessness, but let's see that this could very well be something that God uses to bring about an amazing outcome. That He might bring revival among His people and that on that revival in His people coming back to Him, He would then bring about spiritual awakening among people who don't know Him. This Easter, we need to be thankful, but we also need to consider, has God brought the pandemic to get his people's attention so that we would humble ourselves? We would start to communicate with him as he's intended for us to do. We would seek to have a deeper intimate relationship with Him, opening our eyes to the wickedness of our sinfulness so that we would repent and turn back to Him, so that not only will He forgive our sins, but He will open the spiritual eyes of the people in our nation so that they would have salvation from their sin as well. Maybe you're watching today and you realize for the first time that God is real and He loves you. But you're separated from Him because of your sin. If you want to have a relationship with God, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Take time right now to tell Him 
that you declare he is real. Stop what you're doing right now and just talk to God. If you've never talked to God before, it doesn't require something special. It just requires you to pay attention to him and to, tell, to talk to him. So tell him, I declare that you're real. Tell him that you know that you have sin in your life. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and to give him your life. Tell him that you want him to be your Savior and Lord. Take time to do that right now. For those of you who are believers, maybe you need to take this moment, maybe the Holy Spirit has convicted you of sin that might be in your life that you need to take time to bring that before him confess that sin turn from your wicked way and get your life back on track with him it might also believe be that as believers out there maybe you're on track with god and so you need to take time right now and spend a moment praying for someone you know that God has put on your heart, a family member, a friend, someone you work with, a neighbor that doesn't know Jesus. Take time right now to pray for that person. I'm going to give you a minute. If you talked to God today and made the decision to give your life to Him and ask Him to be your Savior and Lord, I want you to let me to know. That is an exciting decision. And that's why we celebrate Easter because of what Jesus did for us to give us the opportunity to have that forgiveness, to be able to have a relationship with a holy God because our sin debt has been paid for. And so if you have made that decision and you have admitted your sin and, and accepted him as your Lord and Savior, given your life to Jesus, I want to know about that. You need to start telling people. Why not start by telling me? If you've made that decision, then what I want you to do, uh, in, in a minute or two, we're going to close our time. I want you to take your phone and I want you to text the word BELIEVE to this number. It should be appearing on your screen. 587-840-6070. I want to know about the decision you've made. Tell other people, but I want you to start by telling me. I'm excited if you've made this decision, and I would like to follow up with you. So go ahead and text the word BELIEVE to that phone number. Let's take a moment now just to close our time together in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we have so much to be thankful to you for, for your salvation, for your for, uh, from our sins, the forgiveness of those sins, the gift of eternal life and in a relationship with you. Father, how you care for us and walk with us. Lord, if, if there is someone today who made the decision for the first time to give their life to you. Father, we want to praise and thank you. And I ask that you would bless that person. 
Father, for all of those people that your children prayed for that don't know you yet, I pray that you would be at work in their lives, that you would help each and every one of us, the relationship we've given to that person that doesn't know you. Help us to show your love, your care, your concern. Help us to share with them uh, and talk to them about you. Have a spiritual conversation with you. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to turn our lives back to you, to follow you and live our life for you in a way that gets the attention of people around us, that they see you alive in us, that we would have conversations. And Father, that you would not uh, only help us and forgive us of our sin, but Father, that you would heal our land. Oh, Father, I pray that you would bring about a miraculous spiritual awakening around us. What a glorious outcome to very difficult and troubled times. But sometimes you need to use these kinds of things to shake us and wake us up to see the truth that we might be able to receive the gift and have a relationship with you that you so desire. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this Easter weekend. We know we, we can't spend it with our extended family like we normally would. We're not able to gather together as fellow believers to worship you. But that doesn't make this Easter any less important. The meaning behind this Easter doesn't change. And so we want to celebrate it. We want to praise you. We want to thank you. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I hope that God makes this an extra special Easter for each of you. I pray that you sense his presence in a new way. Stay healthy and God bless. Hopefully we'll see you back here again next week.